This adventure is sponsored by Angfa New South Wales. A link to them is available in the video description. incredibly cold but hopefully there are some animals that are awake that we'll be able to find I can't explain quite how cold it is but it got down to about I don't know 10 last night and it's not much warmer this morning I wonder if anything going to be moving about to about half past six in the morning. It's such a beautiful area. I'm just having my hand out of my jacket. It's incredibly cold. <laughs> I'm going to go try and find a bit of sun and hopefully warm up a little bit. Let's see what the river's looking like. You might notice some of the trees around me are all charred from a fire because there was quite a big fire that came through here several months ago, maybe a year ago, and you can see how quickly the forest has grown back. It'll no doubt have grown back with slightly different species and a different layout. Some of these bigger trees, most of which seem to have managed to regrow after the fire, like this one behind me. Not all of them, but a lot of them seem to have bounced back. Oh, and there's some really cool caterpillars. Let's get a look at those. These creatures aren't actually caterpillars, even though they look and behave similarly to them. They're actually the babies of a type of wasp called Spitfire Sawflies. They get the name Spitfire because when threatened, they will rise up and vomit a strong smelling yellow green liquid consisting mostly of eucalyptus oil to deter predators. They spend their days eating plant matter, typically not damaging the plant except for the few leaves that they consume. Eventually, when it's time for them to become a wasp, they will retreat underground and form a cocoon where they will spend the next two or three years metamorphosizing before emerging as a fully grown wasp with beautiful honey colored wings. The adult wasps typically only live for a few days and are mostly female. They don't require a partner to reproduce, but if they are lucky enough to find a male, then all the eggs will also turn out to be males. But if the female doesn't find a male, then all the babies will turn out female. They inject their eggs into the leaves or bark of trees, always in the sun, as the babies rarely survive if they are laid in the shade. The babies then hatch after two to eight weeks and form a group just like these ones, feeding on leaves and other plant matter. What a very unique species of wasp. You can see one of them starting to rise up and get annoyed with my camera, so we better leave these ones be. In Brisbane it, it doesn't snow, but it, it does get this cold. Um, but it, it snows here, it's the only, one of the only places in Queensland that does snow. And I, yeah, I believe it snows here, because <laughs> we're not even in winter. And it is incredibly cold. We're actually only in April, so summer's only just ended. We're basically in the most southerly point in Queensland. It's about three, 
three to four hours drive from Brisbane, depending on which way you go. And I think I finally found a bit of sunlight. <laughs> so I'm gonna sit here and warm up for a bit. And hopefully something cool will also want to warm up and we can get a look at him. Isn't this a spectacular area? Wow. I really like it here. This would have to be one of my favourite areas that I've been to. <coughs> This is such an alien looking landscape. The main reason I chose to come to Giraway National Park is because there's a few really rare species that I wanted to find and they're going to be a challenge to find because everyone we spoke to says they aren't here but I know that they are and I'm just convinced that no one else was able to find them but I'm, I'm going to try my best to find them and if they are here I guarantee I will find them. One of those species is called the river blackfish. And the river blackfish have a very limited range. And they're incredibly hard to find. There's only a few national parks really along the border of Queensland and New South Wales. And then there's a few places in New South Wales as well where we can find find this variety of them and I really really want to track one down but not just the blackfish there's also some other species that live here like there's a really rare type of crayfish and I was hoping that getting up this early they'd be wandering around but it, it might be too cold for them to be that active at the moment but they're bright orange and as far as I know no one's ever filmed them before there's definitely pictures of them but I haven't seen any footage of them so really hoping we can find the blackfish and those crayfish and also there's another species called galaxis and I'd love to find some of them as well it's so nice sitting here in the sun <laughs> Let's go take a look and see if we can see if any fish are active at this time of the day. Oh, check this out. The, it's that cold that the mist coming off the water is showing up in the sunlight. Let's see if I can get that on film. Wow, what an amazing sight this was. I had such a great time watching the mist coming off the water and those beautiful rays of sun shining through the leaves of the trees. I've never seen this before, mainly because I've never been up so early when it's been this cold. But what a magical sight. In order to find fish and crayfish sometimes it helps to think if I was a crayfish or fish where would I like to hide and I'm fairly sure this area behind me is where I'd like to hide if I was a fish or crayfish so let's see if there's any fish or crayfish that think like me and to me this is the perfect spot for a black fish to hang out at but it was unusual that I didn't manage to see any. However, I have a feeling that if I come back here in the future, I may be able to track some down. Because next to this fast flowing current, that is such a perfect little spot for them to hang out. There's some roots for them to retreat into, and then there's the fast flowing current bringing food down, and then this slower moving bit of water where they'll happily be able to hang out but I didn't manage to see any at this time. However, I will be checking back 
and exploring this area several times throughout the next few days, just to make sure if they are living in this particular area. A lot of my time is spent sitting by the river, just watching like I'm doing here. I'm watching for any sign of movement. And if I see one, then I'll get my camera in the water really quickly and try to figure out the what creatures it is. in this park, like the blackfish and crayfish, have adapted to survive in freezing conditions. Literally, the water can get frost over the top of it and freeze in certain parts. But it also gets quite hot here in the summer. So there's a wide fluctuation in temperature that they can tolerate. But the water is always cold. We're up fairly high and the water comes out of a spring somewhere underground up further. We're gonna go try and find. It's pretty amazing that they've managed to survive in what's well, quite a harsh terrain. I mean, looking in the, in the water, there's no shrimp. There's no little gudgeons or other fish. I presume all that the blackfish are eating are little insects and mosquito larvae. It's hard to say though. Hopefully we can film some and get a better idea of what they're surviving off up here. Get an idea of the conditions that they're living in. And looking around at these unique plants, I saw some really cool types of fungi and mosses and a really interesting species of lichen as well. It's amazing, everywhere you look, there was something unique to investigate. And I've never seen this before, but this is a type of spider that collects leaves and then wraps them around their body into a cone shape and the spider will hang out inside of this leaf shelter, protected from birds or other things trying to harm the spider. And I imagine it protects them to a certain degree from the rain and the cold as well. As you can see, all of the condensation on the outside of this leaf, whereas on the inside, it will be nice and dry for this spider to survive. I've never, I've never encountered these spiders before. And I thought they were really rare, but it turns out they're really common throughout Australia. What an amazing adaptation that spider has come up with. This particular plant was covered in spider webs, which means it's probably a perfect spot for insects. And this praying mantis is waiting for those insects to come by and then it can strike at them. And look how well camouflaged they are. They blend in perfectly with this plant in the surrounding area. I hope you enjoyed seeing this area and learning about all these cool species. I'll see you on our next episode when we continue searching for the river blackfish and those super rare spiny crayfish. Until then, keep it murky.